Hey guys, it's Mason with First and Finishing, and today we're going to be talking about powder cloud control using any of your Electron Plus 3 Master Units. So there's five things that are important for powder cloud control, but there's really four big ones, so let's go ahead and start with those. Uh, first, we're going to talk about fluidization, so whether you're on a multicolor or box feed system like this, a big hopper system, or even a bear kit using some small hoppers, it is all very important, so I'll show you what it looks like. On a box feed system, it should look something like this. Now whether you're using a bear kit or a hopper, they should both look like this. You just want the powder bubbling up on top. You don't want it exploding. You just want a nice soft bubbles there on top. So now that we have our fluidization working properly, we can go ahead and move into our next two settings and these are going to be on our control unit. So these two air settings here, this 4.5 is your total air and this 60 is just 60% of this 4.5. So there's 4.5 cubic meters per hour of air in both of these lines at all times and there's 60% just in this red one, which means the leftover 40% is in this black one. So how this works is 60% of that air is going in this pump making a hard 90 degree turn. That's what creates the suction to pull up the powder from your pickup tube or your hopper. And the remaining 40% is going in here and making a hard 92, but this is around the pump insert. And that's kind of more of an air assist to help push the powder all the way through your powder hose and out of your gun. So as you increase this number here, you're increasing your total air throughout the system, which in turn means you're going to be spraying more air, which probably means more powder but not necessarily because as you increase this air, that means more powder. You're using more air to suck up the powder, so you're gonna be spraying more powder. But as you decrease it, you're gonna have a lot of extra push air that has no powder that it's sucked up to push. So you're just gonna be spraying a lot of air without any powder behind it. So you need a good combination of these to make your powder cloud how you want it. That may seem a little confusing, but now we're gonna get into a couple examples to hopefully help you understand it a little bit better. So we're going to start somewhere in the middle at that 3.0 and 5. I'll show you what that looks like. It's a little heavy, quite a bit of powder. It's pretty forceful. So I could turn this down, tame it back a bit. Now it's more subtle coming out of the gun. But if it's not enough powder because it's pretty thin there, I can always increase this up a little bit more. Get more powder to come out of the gun. But you can always spray more powder too. So if you increase both, a lot of, lot of power behind it. You see how far it's shooting out? But if we turn this up, it's not going to shoot out as far. At this point, it kind of has to. I'd rock something like that. I think that's a nice soft cloud, good for any sort of custom coating, something like that. But you can go even less if you want to. Something like that. A really fine but consistent cloud. So now that we know how these settings work in correlation to your powder cloud, we can go ahead and move on to our fourth setting, which is going to be your nozzle type. So Electron has two different nozzles. We have the flat spray and the round jet. Up first, we have this flat spray. So you can see it's just vertical, horizontal, however you want it. And it has little side exits like this. But they also provide what we call a multi-spray adapter. So you can put this over it like that. You still have your side exits but you have different settings on here. So now we cut off those side exits and we can even go more fine point like that. So I'll show you what these look like. So first we have the full side exits, something like that. You can cut off the side exits like this and then you can even go more narrow. So these are really good when you're doing parts that you can't really reach to or that's having back ionization problems or even when you're too close and you're bumping into other stuff. This way you can be more precise with where your powder cloud's going and you can really get your powder to land where you want it. So we also have the round jet nozzle. Looks something like this. If you don't put any diffuser on, it comes out like this. But it comes with diffusers. So there's three different styles of diffusers, three different sizes really. And then go on like this. This is the smallest one. It'll make a cone, something like this. Makes it a little bit wider than it was. You can go up one bigger. Here's the next size bigger. And then there's one more bigger. This is the biggest size. So 
So the round jet's really good, especially for parts where you're going to be coating the inside of them and there's no access from the outside. Um, for flat spray, you're going to have too much of a direct like vertical line in there with the round jets. It's going to be coating all sides around it, so it's really helpful there. And some people really like for multi-coat two or three coat parts because it really helps get in those Faraday areas without causing back ionization or any other issues like that. So now that we're done with nozzles, we can go and get into our last setting, which is going to be the rinsing air. So the rinsing air is on your second page. You can hit this book, and it's this top number here. Point two is factory, so that's what this is going to look like. But you can always turn it up and down. So point O, it's going to have less pressure behind it. It's not going to be pushing as far because there's not any extra air there. But obviously, if you go really high, you get a one. It's going to be pushing really hard right in the middle because your rinsing air is coming out of the electrode right there. So obviously the middle of your cloud is gonna have more air than the rest of it and you don't want that. So point two or lower is what I recommend. Maybe if you're doing metallics and you're putting a really big load on the cascade, you might increase it to help keep it cool. But most of the time, point two, point one, you're gonna be okay. So that's it as far as powder cloud control using your Electron Plus 3 Master Series. Remember, it's your fluidization, your two air settings, the nozzle you choose to use, and your rinsing air. If you have all of those in check, you'll be good. If you have any more questions or if you're interested in getting a unit, feel free to message us or check out our website at firstandfinishing.net. But thank you guys for watching, and I'll see you next time.